ah, the sky is falling with AM5, everything is on fire, ah. No, 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 no. We're here to look at the MSI Mag B650M Mortar Wi-Fi. This is one of the more affordable B650M motherboards. This is not PCIe 5, that's what you give up. But a lot of people said AM5 as a platform is just too expensive. The prices have been ratcheted up. Everything is more. And while AM5 is a new platform, it is not the value platform yet. The value platform from AMD right now is AM4. That's sort of where we are. AM5 is still kind of a premium, even if you're going to get a motherboard like the B650M Mortar Wi-Fi, which has more USB and more PCIe connectivity than even some of the desktop boards that we see for AM5. We're gonna take a deep look at that motherboard, but I'm also gonna ramble on a little bit about the general state of AM5 and some other fun, interesting things to watch out for, including SSDs that are coming up for the whole PCIe 5 conversation that'll be in separate reviews, but let's dive in. Let's start by taking a closer look at our motherboard. Now this is a micro ATX motherboard, but you wouldn't know it if you just read the specifications. There's really very, very little in the box. It's the motherboard and a couple SATA antennas and unnecessarily cheap Wi-Fi antennas, European regulatory notices, an M.2 screw, I'm sorry, an M.2 retention clip, which is toolless, which is very nice a quick installation guide, and some stickers with Lucky. Oh yeah, MSI, congratulations. It's, you know, their 30th anniversary kind of thing. So, Micro ATX motherboard. But if we check out the connectivity on our Micro ATX motherboard, there's kind of a lot of PCIe, DisplayPort, HDMI, and everything else. And, and we're doing pretty good in terms of our M.2 connectivity. But everything here is PCI Express 4, not 5. That's what you give up with this motherboard. Now it still has four DDR5 DIMM slots. And that is the surface mount DDR5, so you'll be able to run DDR5 at some pretty reasonable speeds. We've also got a good enough VRM here in order to be able to run our uh, Ryzen 9 7950X. Now the layout here for the PCIe is pretty intelligent. Your M.2s are connected directly to the CPU. Again, just limited to PCI Express 4.0. The bottom physical slot, it's physical X16, but it's X4 electrical that's connected through the chipset. But that does run at PCI Express 4.0 as well. And then our uh, PCI Express by one, also through the chipset. At the rear I.O., we have our BIOS flash button. This will let you flash a BIOS from a USB stick, which is important because new CPUs could come out of the motherboard and not, not support it. If you're building a system and it's dead and it won't turn on and you've waited the requisite you know, DDR5 training time a couple of minutes, you may just need to update your BIOS. So there's instructions for that on the MSI website. Basically, you make a special flash drive, put it in a special USB port, hit the button, and even without a working CPU or even with an unknown CPU, the platform can take the file on the flash drive and flash it to the BIOS, and then you'll be able to boot your new CPU or you know, reset your BIOS or re-upgrade your BIOS or whatever, whatever you need to do in order to get your system to boot. We've got DisplayPort and HDMI out. We've got a 2.5 gigabit LAN that is based around the Realtek 8125BG 2.5 gigabit LAN chipset. We've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A. Those are 10 gigabit ports just below that. Then we've got a Type A and a Type C, which is 20 gigabit. Then next to that, we've got four five gigabit ports. Those are the blue ones. And then we have two Wi-Fi ports for our Wi-Fi 6E solution. This is a six gigahertz solution. Uh, this is an AMD Wi-Fi 6E solution. This is one of the first that we've seen in the market. Woo, go AMD, your Wi-Fi chipset, yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, but it's nice to see that. Then we have our eight channel 7.1 HD audio with audio boost. And this is a true 7.1 channel output. Uh, unlike some of the other motherboards that we've seen on the AM5 platform that just have a couple of analog audio output ports, this has your traditional analog 7.1 at the rear IO. So if you've got a really old, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of people in the forum that have those ancient Logitech uh, computer speaker sets that had the 7.1 analog. I still got a set of those myself. I really like them. Got to recap it. It's their, the capacitors are hitting their age. You're going to have to, you're going to have to recap those. But if you got an analog audio solution, then that works out pretty well for you. Although you could just use SPDIF or a USB add-in card or whatever, depending on what your audio requirements are. So eh. even though this is a micro ATX motherboard, it does pack in some uh, pretty spectacular other IO for a micro ATX. Six SATA six gigabit per second ports, a, a 30 pin right angle, USB five gigabit connector, a type C connector that's well above the GPU. Then of course you get your 24 pin ATX power along with dual eight pin power for the CPU. 
Now the motherboard on here is rated for DDR5 OC up to 6400. Given the DDR5 6000 sweet spot of AM5, that's probably gonna work out pretty good unless future CPUs are able to do even higher memory clocks. So maybe that's another vote in favor of, ah, I'm just gonna save a few bucks on a motherboard. I'll get another motherboard later when the next generation of AM5 is out. Something like that. It's not a, not a bad strategy. Now what do you really give up with PCIe 5? We are starting to see a couple of uh, PCIe 5 M.2 hit the market. However, if we look at what are currently class leading performance M.2, they're pretty much all PCI Express 4. Now, Optane, of course, it's on the way out. That's dead. That doesn't really count. But if we look at, you know, the Samsung 990 Pro, that is PCIe 4, not 5. And the reason that that SSD feels so fast is not because it can do the raw throughput, you know, 10 gigabytes per second. It's because it has very low I.O. latency. And that's really important to make your computer, you know, feel snappy and feel responsive. Uh, another SSD to watch is the Solidine P44. They've done a tremendous amount of work around the software stack in order to optimize what the drive is doing with various interaction with different operating systems. So I have some reviews of those upcoming. The 990 is not generally available yet. The P44 is getting ready to be available. I've also got the Mushkin Vortex. There are some other, you know, this is a two terabyte model. There are some other lower cost options that have some pretty reasonable performance. But again, everything across the board is pretty much PCI Express 4. I am watching and hoping that PCI Express 5 implement some of these same software optimizations so you can have the best of both worlds, fast transfer rate plus everything else. But I have a feeling that PCIe 5's time to shine is really probably gonna be in direct storage and maybe it won't make that much of a difference over PCI Express 4, but that's a, that's a ramble for another time. Let's get this thing in a system and get it tested. Now rounding out our build, for most of the testing, I used G-Skill Trident Z5. This is a Neo kit, DDR5 6000. It has the Expo profile. If you're not read in on that, you should check out our coverage of the AM5 platform. There's a lot you can learn. I mean, AM5 is a new platform. There's a lot of new, cool, different stuff, but like XMP helps you overclock memory. Expo helps you overclock memory on an AMD platform. So you look for an Expo memory kit, like the G-Skill Trident Z kit, and it'll work out pretty well if you wanna run it at DDR5 6000. Now, as always, if you do a build like this, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is update your BIOS. Even if it boots and everything seems like it's okay, updating the BIOS is gonna bring quality of life and stability improvements generally across the board. Now, this platform, AM5, is actually pretty cool because pretty much any AM5 motherboard will be able to run any AM5 CPU including our absolutely monstrous 7950X. This is a 16 core CPU, and I was able to cool it on this motherboard with our Noctua you know, dual AF12 tower cooler here. This is not even as beefy as like the NHD15, and it doesn't really throttle. The whole 95 degrees C hotspot with AM5, that was kind of overblown. It's sort of designed to work like that, and the hotspot for 95C is super tiny. I'm starting to learn that. I'm starting to get clued in on that as we do more testing. It's not a throttle point, it's a set point. There's no throttling that's actually occurring when it's 95 degrees C. That's just what it's targeting for maximum performance, assuming that the power and everything else is there. This is a motherboard that I would pair probably with the 7700X or the 7900X, the, the eight or the 12 core. The 7600X is a little bit more challenging. So there's nothing, you can run the 7600 on this motherboard. That's no problem, it's only six cores. It's just that, you probably want the 7700. It's only 100 bucks more right now. There's probably going to be some pricing adjustments. So at the time that I'm shooting this, uh, you know, we're talking uh, October 23rd. Um, the launch pricing and your local availability may be different for AM5 just because of competition in the marketplace and everything else. But this is not a motherboard that's $500 or $1,000 or, or $1,200. This is a reasonable motherboard for AM5 among all of the other choices for AM5. That said, there is one thing that I wish they would have done differently, and that is the top PCIe slot is not located as high as it could be. Typically in, an, in a micro ATX case, you've only got four slots to work with at the back. And so with this PCIe placement, the primary slot is actually down one. And because of that, if you've got a triple slot GPU, you'll never be able to use any of these PCIe slots. In an ideal world, it would be right under the CPU, it'd be right here, but they would probably have to relocate the M.2. Might have been nice to have a third M.2 slot as well, but if you've got a two slot GPU, you could theoretically use the bottom PCIe slot. But in this configuration, nah, it's a little more challenging. 
Now let's talk off-label uses. If you want to use this motherboard for like a home server type application, this actually could make a lot of sense. You got DisplayPort and HDMI out. All of these AM5 CPUs have a built-in iGPU, so you can be able to run three peripherals here and be able to do whatever you want to do. If you want to add a second NIC, including an Intel i225V, check out our uh, you know home server PCIe cheat codes because you can actually add those in via M.2 module. That's off-label. Nobody really nobody really intended to be able to use M.2 slots for peripherals like networking, but there are two and a half and even 10 gig network cards that will fit in an M.2 slot. And you've got two M.2 slots here to work with. You can take your X16 slot, break that into four M.2 slots, and then use your M.2 for other peripherals. You can get real creative. And those Zen 4 cores for home servers and virtualization probably are the best choice for things that are available right now because you don't have to juggle you know, multiple different core types if you're running a virtualization platform, which the support for that on Linux is the best but still has a little ways to go. Now, MSI has a number of really unique BIOS features, and I have to call out Memory Try It and Beta Runner. These features in the world of AM5, where things are a little bit uh, up in the air right now, are hugely, hugely beneficial. So I put in a non-Expo kit just to experiment, and Memory Try It let me basically one try get this kit of memory up and running. Now, this is a DDR5 6600 kit. I actually want to run it at 6000, not 6600. Memory Try It has a menu that has a whole bunch of different memory options in it that have tighter timings as well as 6000. You see, if you tune the memory, you might be able to get better timings than you would if you just lower it from 6600 to 6000. So you can make up the performance. Like you're not really leaving any performance on the table if you improve the timings from 6600 to 6000. You get what I'm saying? Memory Try It and Beta Runner makes it easy to do that without absolutely bricking your system. And if you do brick your system, well, the BIOS flashback thing is there to go. Oh, and JBAT1 at the bottom, it's a two pin jumper. That'll let you clear the CMOS in case you really, really screw up or just take all the dims out but one. And usually that's enough to make the system wake up and say, oh, I've got to retrain the memory, do whatever, and get you back into BIOS. But MSI has got some unique features in their BIOS other than just that. I really do like the way that they do their BIOS. And with the DDR5 AM5 platform being as new as it is, those features, which have been there since time immemorial, are even more handy now than they've ever been. It's a pretty nice little board. It also has some pretty cool features that are built into the BIOS. So check that out. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you'll find me in the Level 1 forums.